Here we've got a 6V6 beam tetrode amplifier. It's a very simple single-ended type valve amplifier with a 6J5 driver tube. We've got all the components here marked out for you very neatly for the basic electronics when we cover this. This is our part one for the video. We've got plenty more to come with the part two and the follow-ups. Very simple amplifier put together. We don't know where it came from. Probably a record player or something like that. It's not too dissimilar from the Fender Champ, especially the first model, which had a pentode valve for the driver, the 6SJ7. We're going to follow all that and mark all the components clearly for the basic electronics when we go through the uh, tutorial set. Here's Phil Moss, he's going to take you through the circuit diagram and do his part of the video. So, what do we got here? Well, it's an AC only amplifier with a single pole switch. So we've got a 6X5 full wave rectifier which shares its heater supply with the heater supplies of the other two valves. One side of the heater is earth. It doesn't have choke or even resistive smoothing for the main HD. It's just got 32 microfarads here. It then feeds the output transformer to the anode of the 6V6. And straightforward output transformer, external loudspeaker. I will come to the feedback later because that is the thing that is rather different about this. So the 6V6's screen grid is decoupled by a 10K resistor at 16 microfarad. So by the time the supply gets to the screen grid, it is very smooth. There is then a 100K resistor that is fed from the same place and goes down to what they say is 1000 PF, which is a very small value of capacitor, and 1 meg ohm, and that feeds the grid of the output valve. The input stage is a 6J5, and it's a straightforward triode input. It's um, not going to be terribly sensitive and the 6J5 is not going to be particularly low noise. But on the other hand, this would have almost certainly been driven from crystal pickup. Now, its cathode seems to go in the wrong direction, up towards the HT and not down towards ground. But in fact, what it does is go back into the feedback. So we have a 2K2 bias resistor, which is entirely conventional, and that is connected in series with the loudspeaker output winding on the transformer, which isn't quite so conventional. But that's negative feedback. But here you can see, from the anode side, we have a switch and a number of components in the feedback. Now there's 100 PF and 100 K, which is always in circuit, regardless of what you do with the switch. So there is a certain amount of feedback, but only at high frequencies with such a small capacitor. That is in place of having a capacitor across the output transformer for the tone correction using a pentode. Nothing is added in this position. In this position, we have 4, 400, sorry, 400 PF across the feedback. That means that more treble is fed back, which means that it's a treble cut circuit. The next stage, they seem to be very keen on the precise value of 1400 PF because we've got a 400 and a 1000 PF. One would have thought that they could have stood the difference to use the nearest preferred value, which is 1500 PF. But if you switch to that position, then it is the case that even more treble is fed back and so there is more treble cut in that. So it's normal, a bit cut, very cut. Um, there must be quite a lot of negative feedback having the cathode resistor in series with the whole of the output voltage. Normally it will be fed back to a potential divider as I think you have seen in other amplifiers. In other words, the 2K2 you would expect to be in series with say 100 ohms and then several thousand ohms from here being fed back to that point. But this is 100% feedback at um, low frequencies. But then if you have an input of a couple of volts, which is what you get from a crystal pickup, even if the gain in here is only times 10, you've now got 20 volts, which is more than enough to drive the output valve um, to its limits. So there is gain going spare, as it were, in this circuit. Hence, one can have a lot of negative feedback at all frequencies and then the treble cut. 
mains transformer at one end of the chassis the audio at the other that's a sensible idea reservoir and smoothing capacitor up next to the mains transformer fine not so fine is having the rectifier valve next to the input valve now i haven't heard this amplifier it might work perfectly well but if it was designed by me i would move the rectifier up towards the mains transformer it's a spacing which means that it doesn't cook either of them as neither of them will uh, appreciate the temperature rise but i'd have also kept the rectifier away from the audio stage and especially i'd have kept it away from the input valve the mains transformer has its laminations that way the output transformer at 90 degrees to minimize hum and anyway there is that much gap between them so there will be very little hum pickup it could have been rearranged moving the output transformer up further putting the output valve next to it there and the input valve there which would keep the uh, hum further away from the input valve but again it must be said that with the crystal cartridge as the input there's a lot of input voltage and not a great deal of gain and it might well have had a good uh, signal to noise ratio it has a particularly interesting version of a 6J5 here because it's one of those that had a metal rim round the base and they have a propensity to split and this one has split in the other sense of the word in other words it's gone um, it'll work fine like that might make it a bit more microphonic but then the amplifier may never be used again anyway and even if it is providing it isn't shaken it will work fine I'd like to say thank you to Phil for this video there and we're looking forward to the next one which will be the Oxyzone or the Grippies EL84 Pentode which is also a single-ended amplifier using no negative feedback whatsoever on this circuit design. There's also a 6V6 beam tetrode version and uh, that's the same kind of thing but a bit lower output. There's the circuit diagrams. We've got these ones all carefully marked up as well. We're going to explain these for the basic tutorial series and go through them thoroughly and do a lot of test and measurement stuff going on with the uh, analog distortion analyzers and etc. And uh, compare it with this amplifier, look at all the distortions and experiment with the negative feedback and see what we can do with different driver circuits. And uh, also in the later videos, we're going to cover the Fender Champ. We'll go through both circuit designs and take a look at that as well. See you on the next video.